Friends, today is Holy Saturday. There is no official liturgy in the church. But we shall sit in silence. We shall sit in silence with Mary, the mother of sorrows, before the tomb. The silence of the tomb, the silence of that stony grave. We shall begin with the hymn, Lord, you have touched my heart and left me speechless with joyful lips in 17. Lord, you have touched my heart and left me speechless. Silence is all I need to sing your praise. Lord, it is you who are my cup and portion. Lord, it is you yourself who are my prize. Lord, you have touched my heart and left me speechless. Silence is all I need to sing your praise. So I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. And who directs my thoughts all through the night. Lord, you have touched my heart and left me speechless. Silence is all I need to sing your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 19, verses 25 to 27. Meanwhile, standing at the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. My dear friends, if there is one person who's been faithful to Jesus, who's walked with Jesus through the ups and downs of his life, it is Mary, his mother and our mother. Mary moves from being a mother through the natural ties of motherhood and then after the wedding feast at Cana, she becomes a disciple following in the footsteps of her son. And when everybody has deserted her son Jesus, there is Mary at the foot of the cross. And there Jesus gives Mary over to us through the disciple whom he loved, John. Son, behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. And it is said from that hour onward, from that day onward, John takes Mary as his mother. Friends, we have that beautiful picture of the Pieta, which you know very well, Mary, holding the brutalized bloody body of her son. What pain she must have undergone to see her son innocent. And she hands him over to be put into the tomb. And there's no mention of Mary thereafter. But Mary is the one who ponders these things in her heart. It is mentioned in the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 2 verses 19 and 51, Mary pondered these things, not in her mind, but Mary ponders these things in her heart. And she calls you and me to ponder the meaning of life, not just in our minds, but in the depths of our hearts. So we sit in silence before the stone, before the tomb, with the so-called mother of sorrows, you remember again in the Gospel of Luke chapter 2, 
that Simeon tells Mary that this child Jesus is destined for the rise and fall of many. And then he tells her, and your heart will be pierced with a sword. Mary understands pain. Mary understands sorrow. Right from the day Jesus was born in Bethlehem and even before that, right up to the end when he's put into the tomb. Mary is our mother. Mary understands your sorrow and your pain. The stone is a symbol of death, a so-called grave issue. You must have seen pictures these days of the tombs, of the coffins, of men and women and children who have died due to COVID-19. Plenty of graves, a lot of tombs, caskets of the dead lined up. But Mary is a woman of hope. Mary knows that love is eternal, that love does not end with death and that the God of life and love will bring full justice, will bring this victim to victory, will bring this crucified son of hers to a new life. How she does not know, but she waits with patience and with hope. Think of your own suffering, think of your own pain, friends, and sit with Mary. Today is a day also of silence. It's extremely difficult to be silent because there are so many noises all around us of traffic, of people, the hustle and bustle of the city. And there's no time to be silent, to be by ourselves. We listen to loud music. We like to shout at each other as we keep on with this hurried pace, never finding time for silence. It might seem ironical that I am speaking about silence. I remember a professor of mine who was speaking about silence and spoke one hour on the value of silence. Perhaps words will fail us and words should not be used today, but let us sit in silence. So three questions for our reflection and for our response. First, try to enter into the heart of Mary. What would Mary have felt seeing this passion, this brutal passion, scourging, the crowning with thorns, the falls, the crucifixion, the death of a beloved innocent son? What did Mary feel through all this as his mother. The second point that we can reflect on is to listen. To be silent, to listen that all that is happening outside of us and all that goes on within us. Now, silence is not the absence of noise, but silence is the presence of the omnipresent God. Silence is pregnant with presence, presence of God, presence of nature, who rather goes unnoticed and we do not listen to God and to nature. So today in silence, listen perhaps to the sounds that you've never heard. With the close down, you hear so many sounds of the birds and the bees and the breezes. Listen to these sounds one by one. Listen to the sounds within you. Perhaps putting your hand on your heart, your heartbeat. Perhaps checking your pulse as a sign of love, the sign of life. The life which is going through your whole body. Silence also is an act of obedience. The word obedience comes from the Latin ob audire, to listen. Mary constantly listened. Jesus listened to the voice of his father. He spent a lot of time out in the hills. 
listening. And because he listened, he could surrender to God. So let us sit, perhaps before a closed door, symbolic of the shut down, symbolic also of the grave, and see what thoughts run through our mind, our heart. Let us remain in silence. Silence along with Mary, silence with hope, with faith, and with love, saying yes, yes to God, for all that was and all that will be. Let us pray. Lord God, you are omnipresent, accessible to everyone, everywhere, always. We come to you today in silence. We sit before you with Jesus' mother and our mother Mary, pondering all things in our hearts. May we be silent and still in your loving, life-giving presence. Keep us ever trustful and ever hopeful, even amidst the tombstones of disease and death. With Mary, we pray, we are your servants. Let it be done unto us according to your will. We surrender all our loved ones buried in graves and cremated in crematoriums waiting for new life in you. Amen.